Hey, let's talk about fruit to root. Of the tools that we teach, this is really the hardest one. It's the hardest to teach. It's the hardest to get. It requires the most from your people in terms of vulnerability and authenticity. But it's also one of the highest um, return on investment. I find every time I do it, I, I just it rocks me. I go, oh man, is that is that really in me? This is really what's going on. So uh, so it's a great it's a great tool, and, and I want you to teach it well when you teach it. So this is this is how I do it. You know, I, I always start it around this fundamental question, this fundamental idea, I should say, that what we believe is best expressed by what we do. So it, we understand this kind of fundamentally um, in other areas of our life. Where we say, if you tell me, oh, well, the biggest toxin in America is sugar, but then I see you slamming 32 ounce Cokes, then I go, okay, you might believe that, but you don't believe that, right? You might intellectually in your mind think that's true, but it, it doesn't come through in your actions. Or spiritually, you see this, people say, oh, well, Bible reading is so important. Great. You might believe that, but if you don't actually ever crack your Bible open, then I don't know what good your belief does you. And this is because um, we, we, like especially this Western American Christianity thing, we have this idea that our beliefs, our beliefs are the things that we intellectually think are true. Um, so, yes, I believe that there's going to be a judgment day someday. I believe in Jesus. I believe whatever. Uh, th these are these are statements of facts that we agree with, but that uh, that definition is totally foreign to the New Testament. So when we read the New Testament, it talks about belief. Uh, James says this flat out: Look, man, your beliefs you can show. You know, I'll, I'll demonstrate my, my beliefs to you by what I do. You see this in Hebrews, where all these people are commended for what they did. It says what they believed, but then it specifically says what they did. And so um, what we see is that in the framework of the New Testament. In the framework of the authors of Scripture, um, our belief, you can say you believe whatever you want, but belief is ultimately demonstrated by our actions. And so when I act in such a way as if um, my beliefs are not true, let me, let me say it differently. The, if I act in a way that demonstrates that um, I don't actually believe the things I say I believe, then there's a disconnect there and we need to get into it. And so this is the tool that helps us do this. Jesus says this, he uses this analogy time and time again in Scripture. He says... Like, guys, olive trees, I don't know if you know this or not, but olive trees don't bear apples. He doesn't say apples, but we have you know, apple trees here. Like, olive trees don't bear grapes. Grape vines don't bear olives. Uh, the, the kind of fruit that a thing has, that's what it is. And so you can tell what it is by what the fruit is. And if you look at any other metric, you're going to be wrong. Like, look at what the fruit is, and that tells you what the tree is. So, um, so we can do the same thing for this for our own spiritual life. So let's do this. I'm going to erase this because I'm going to need I'm going to need all the space. So, when I'm dealing with some sort of thing, um, when I'm looking at fruit in my life, it's worth it to say what is at the root of that thing. And there's really four questions that we ask. So I'm going to I'm going to draw, draw my two trees, right? So. That's about right. Trees. And there's really four questions that we're going to ask to get to the root of the fruit. So the first question is like, what's the fruit? And this is really, what am I experiencing? You could ask it. You could answer it differently. You could say, "What what's happening? What am I experiencing? What am I doing? Um, what am I feeling? What am I seeing? What what is this?" And and really, what that leads to is the next question: Who am I? Now we really like um, putting a disconnect between those two things. Oh yeah, I mean, I lied, but I'm not a liar, right? Um, oh well, you know, I did um, commit adultery, but I'm not an adulterer. I, I mean, I sin, everybody sins, right? But I'm not a sinner. Like, it's hard for us to own that. It's like an adulterer is one who adulterers something. A, a liar is one who lies. And so um, Jesus says, again, like, if, if this is what comes out of you, then that's what's inside you. It, it's out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. So, uh, so this part is uncomfortable. But then the next part is this. If, if this is who I am, um, you know, we exist out of the overflow of who God is, right? And so the next question is, what has God done?
And based on that question, you can also ask yourself, who is God? All right. And this question is at the root of most of our bad behavior, right? Whenever I'm doing something that is not, whenever I have bad fruit up here, it's because there's a bad root down here, all right? And who is God is really the root. So when I, um, when I trace this all the way down here, this always is uncomfortable because I'm, I am demonstrating a belief in something that I know intellectually is false, right? And so it takes a high level of vulnerability and of authenticity, being able to name what is, right? And so let's just let's just work through it. So I I, uh, I did this with a, uh, a set of friends. I did this exact thing with a set of friends, and we went through this question, and we were trying to figure out. We we knew it was important to make disciples because Jesus said, "Oh, you should make disciples." And we, okay, we should be doing that, right? Make disciples can't make M's. I can make disciples, but not just not M's. And we went through, we were like, what, what fruit are we experiencing in our own disciple making? And it was like, oh, we're experiencing guilt for not doing more, or we experience anxiety. Why do we experience anxiety? Well, we experience it because of, you know, well, whatever, we're going to get down here. Uh, what else do we experience? Well, I have fear, which is kind of like anxiety, but different. Um, I feel inadequate. And we, had, we filled this whole thing in. I mean, I, this was a bigger thing, and we just filled the whole thing in. But this is plenty for right now. So what am I experiencing is um, I'm experiencing these things. And I can just take one of these things. I'm going to say inadequate um, for, for just for the purpose of this teaching. But... Um, so we can, we can take a thing and then we say, well, well, who am I then? If, if what I'm experiencing is inadequacy, then who am I really? What does that say about me? Well, it's not just that I'm experiencing inadequacy. inadequacy. I am not enough. Right? I don't measure up. I'm not good enough. Um, I'm worthless. And now this whole tree, just so we're clear, this whole tree, you can think of this as a confession of sin. You see that? All right. So what if, if I look at myself and I say, man, I'm worthless, what does that say about God? All right. What, what does that say about my relationship with God? Well, fun, fundamentally, what I'm believing when I'm when I'm saying, "Man, I'm I have this guilt, anxiety, fear because I'm inadequate," what I'm saying is, uh, God's judging me yeah, I'm trying to make space, but God's going to judge me harshly, right? Or um, God didn't make me right. Does the clay say to the potter? You know, God didn't make me right. Or maybe he just, he's unrealistic. He expects too much. Now this is where we get into heresy, right? So if you, I mean, just say out loud, if this was true, what does that say about God? Now, it's not true. All right, we're going to get to that. So people get real uncomfortable, you know, for these two steps because we're, we're comfortable here. But what, what I'm saying by when I feel inadequate, what I'm saying is, hey, God's going to judge me harshly. Uh, he didn't make me right. You know, he expects too much. What I'm saying about God, who is God? God is unrealistic. Mm, unrealistic. He's not competent. He didn't make me right, you know. Or maybe uh, he didn't doesn't empower. You 
you know, we could fill this whole thing up. He stuck me out here and didn't take care of me, so he's not trustworthy. Like, there's all kinds of ways you can go down here. And so the point is, um, I'm not saying this is right. What I'm saying is that my life looks as if I believe this is right. Does that make sense? And so naming it, calling it out, is the first step to actually fixing it and going over here and saying, okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to address all of this crap right over here. We're going to say, wait, 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 no, no, no. First of all, God doesn't empower, he does. God empowers me. That's like the whole job of the Holy Spirit is to empower us, right? So God has empowered me to do this disciple-making thing. God has empowered me to do this. He has called me. He's also called me. Right? What else? Um, uh, he's not, I'm not competent. Oh, God's not competent. No, God has the best plans. And I think one other thing that's worth, at least worth saying out loud, um, God knows what's going to happen. He set up this plan because this is his plan. When he said, go make disciples, like, this is why, uh, this is this is the plan that he knew would work. If he thought something else would work, he would have told us to do that. So this is it. God, what does that say about what he's done? All right. Well, he has, God empowers, okay, that's kind of who he is, but that's really what he's done. I mean, I'm, sometimes these two are nebulous. He's specifically, though, he's empowered me. All right, what else? He's called me. What else? He's given me a good plan. All right, what else? Um, yeah, I don't know if I'd want to. Yeah, okay, we'll play better. Uh, so then we go up again. Based on this, based on this, then what am I? What does that say about who I am actually? Um, who am I really when it all comes down to it? Well, you say, man, I'm, I'm called by God. So, okay, God calls. That's true. But I'm called. That's a whole different thing. I mean, obviously, it's the same. But a lot of times I, I can imagine, okay, yeah, God calls. But I haven't internalized that for me. I'm called. I have a calling. And I know this one especially just gets real messy the more I write, like, if you were to just look at this, look at it, and you go, oh my gosh, what is that mess? So it's really, you're not doing this for posterity. You're just doing it to, to process what people are going through. What else? What else are you saying? Well, you know, I'm, I'm called. Um, I've got a plan. I, God, uh, I mean, it's not even, that's really more of who am I. I'm part of God's plan. Well, who am I? I'm, I'm a child of God. I'm empowered by him. And what fruit should come out of that? All right, so we work our way up again. What fruit is going to come out of that? And so, I mean, obviously making disciples, hopefully. But what's happening here is that this, this is kind of a good mirror to this. All right, so these two things. Now, if somebody comes out and they're like, no, i got some good fruit. Just put it over here. Right? If, if in your fruit brainstorming time, if, if you're doing this with a group of people or with one person, they name good fruit, go ahead and put it over here. That's fine. But what will happen is we'll fill in this, we'll work our way down, and then we'll demonstrate, oh, look, this good fruit comes out of this good, this good root. All right? So, um, so if I have a calling, then I can be bold. Right? And that goes right to this fear and anxiety thing. Um, I'm, I'm doing God's plan, right? And so I don't need to, I don't need to feel guilty. Um, and it's really even the still stuff we didn't cover. That's really about the love of God. Um, but I can feel free in the love that God has for me. And inadequate? I don't need to be inadequate. I'm, I'm more than a conqueror, baby. Um, I am perfectly adequate. Or maybe even more. However you want to say that. So, this is a lot, I know. Uh, but it really does, it really does work. And it's just a process that we go through. So this is our confession of faith. I know that's a lot, and this is a long video, but it's what am I experiencing? What's the fruit that I have? Who am I? It's the trunk of the tree. What has God done? And then the root down here is who is God? So those four questions, and work our way down the one tree and up the other, 
really helps us to see both how did I get to this spot, what's going on that's driving this, and also um, what's it going to take, um, what, what would it look like? It helps me vision cast the future, right? What would it look like for me to really move? I mean, this, I, if you tell me don't do this, it's like, well, I just, but if you say, man, based on this stuff here, this, this is the natural fruit of that, then I go, oh yeah, I can lean into that. So it's a, it's a tricky one. It's hard to do, but know the tool, trust the tool, tool, lean into it. And I think you'll just be stunned at some of the conversations that you have. So that's it for me. I'll see you next time.